Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about vertical curve. First we are going to have the introduction of the vertical curve. Then we will discuss about the different types of vertical curves. Later we will discuss about the derivation of vertical curve formula. And at the end we are going to discuss high and low points in vertical curves. So let's start discussing about the vertical curves. Let's say that we have in a ground where two gradients meet at a point. So they form a sharp point at apex. Unless this apex point is rounded off to form a smooth curve, no vehicle can move along the portion of the road like this way. So once we make it this apex as rounded one, then and then the vehicles can easily move through this. So therefore, for smooth and safe running of vehicles, the meeting point of the gradient is rounded off to form a smooth curve in vertical plane. So this type of curve is actually called vertical curve. Again, we can show a cross section of natural land like the one which you can see here. Movement of vehicle on this type of natural surface is almost impossible. So therefore, this natural ground is being converted in such a way so that the vehicle can easily travel through this path like the one that you can see here. So this natural ground is then being converted to a straight road up to here and then a vertical curve up to this point again a straight and then again a vertical curve and then again a straight. So by doing so the vehicle can easily pass through this type of surface. So in order to understand the different types of curves you should be knowing about the gradients or you can say slope which is usually expressed in percentage sometimes they can be represented in angle sometime in ratios so slopes can be of two nature one could be the rising slope which is usually positive there could be another slope which could be falling one and that is usually represented as negative so let's discuss the different types of vertical curve so the curve formed by rise to fall like this way the positive is meeting with the negative so this type of curve is usually called summit curve or sometimes it's also being named as crest curve there is another type of vertical curve which is being formed by fall to rise fall to rise so in this case the type of curve that is being formed is called valley curve or sometimes it is also being named as Sag curve. So recalling what we had previously, so in this profile we can see this would be the summit curve and this would be the valley curve because this is being formed by rising to falling gradient and this is being formed by falling to rising gradient. In order to proceed for the derivation of vertical curve, we should be knowing some basic notations in vertical curve. Likewise, we had for the horizontal curves in simple circular curve are in compound curve. So the start point of the curve is usually being represented with BVC which is actually the beginning point of vertical curve. This will be the end point of the vertical curve EVC. The point where the gradients are meeting is called vertex or vertical point of intersection. So this is the back tangent, the gradient of back tangent usually represented as G1 and G2 would be the gradient of forward tangent and L the length which is the horizontal distance from BVC to EVC. Keep in mind in vertical curve we don't have the length of curve along the curve but the length of curve is actually the horizontal distance from beginning point and end point of the curve. Now let's have a derivation of vertical curve formula. So in order to have the derivation of vertical curve formula the very basic thing that you need to do is that the vertical curve is not a circular curve but that is actually a parabolic curve. So the derivation would be accordingly. So let's say that we have the x-axis and y-axis. Let's say that this is the beginning point of vertical curve shown directly on y-axis and let's say this x-axis is the datum. The datum could be the BNC level where we usually take the reduced level. So this is actually the vertical distance measured from datum 
that could be the reduced level of PVC. Let's say that we have G1 gradient and G2 gradient. It means we are talking about the crest curve and we know that the meeting point of uh, gradients is usually being represented with V or VPI and this is the end point of the vertical curve. So let's say that uh, the curve that is being formed from BVC to EVC is this one and obviously the vertical curve is a parabolic one and the distance, the horizontal distance BVC to EVC is actually the length of the vertical curve. Now when I say that we want to drive the formula for the vertical curve, it means we want to have a general equation of the vertical curve that will tell us about the reduced level at a particular point. So if we want to calculate the reduced level at different points, then we should have a general equation with certain variables that can tell us about the reduced level on the vertical curve. Since in this case, the change is in particle plane, so we are talking about the reduced level, unlike the horizontal curves in which we were talking about the horizontal distance. But here we will be talking about the reduced levels. Let's say that we are some x distance away from the region like up to here. So now we want to have a generalized equation to calculate the reduced level at this point. So that can be done like we want to calculate the reduced level. It means we want the distance from here to here, the distance from this point up to this point. So, so the distance from datum to this point is known by BVC, but we don't know this distance, the distance from this point to this point. So for that uh, we should be knowing some basics like we know that this distance, the distance from the point on gradient to the curve is being calculated using this formula where r is the rate of change of grade. So when I say rate of change of grade, so formula would be this one, forward gradient minus backward gradient divided by the length of the vertical curve will give us the rate of change of grade and this distance can easily be calculated because this grade is known and this distance is x. So this vertical distance would be then g1x. Now how we can drive the equation? We wanted to know the distance from datum to the point on the curve. So the distance from datum to this point is ybvc but we wanted to know this distance. So in order to have this distance so we need to subtract this distance from this distance. Then we can have the distance from here to here. So ultimately then this would be the final equation. So y is equal to y b c up to this point plus g one x up to this point and then minus this expression it means on this point. So this is how the reduced level on any point on the vertical curve can be calculated. So this is the case when we had the crest curve but if you talk about the sec curve then in that case the equation would be same instead of this negative there would be positive. So in other words uh, if r is positive so that is actually the sec curve because uh, this is quite obvious from here g2 in, uh, in sec curve would be positive because that will be the rising one and uh, in sec curve uh, g1 would be the uh, falling one and negative so so negative negative then will become positive so the overall r value would be positive in case of uh, sec curve but if the r is negative uh, that will be the case when you are in crest curve like the one we are talking about over here so in this case r will be negative so this was the equation when we had the crest curve if we had the sec curve so that in that case it will be positive so now we are just done with the derivation of the equation for the vertical curve. The next thing that we need to know is the high point and low point on the vertical curve. So why we need these high and low points? So the reason is to investigate drainage conditions or you can say clearance beneath overhead structures covers or pipes or side distances, it may be necessary to determine the elevation and location of the low or high point on a vertical curve. Like uh, let's say if we have the summit curve then we need to know the high point so that if there is any uh, overhead bridge so for that maybe we need to de determine the clearance distance or maybe if we want to determine the side distances 
in order to have the safe movement of vehicles then again in that case we need to know the high point in case of valley we need to provide the facility for the drainage of water for that we need to know the lowest point or maybe if uh, the underground pipes are there so we need to know the clearance distance cover our pipes so how we can determine the high and low point so we know the equation this is the general equation if we want to know the high point or the low point on the vertical curve we can do it by calculating the slope at the high and low point because you will know that at high and low point the slope would be zero so in other words the derivation of y in terms of x would be zero then we can calculate the high and low point so when you differentiate this equation with respect to x you will get and from here you can have the x distance in the form of gradient one and rate of change of gradient so that x distance will be the distance from the bvc the horizontal distance from the bvc up to the point where we are going to have the high or the low point so this is how the high or low point is being calculated in vertical curve and now you have got uh, the concept that why it is necessary to determine high and low point in a vertical curve. So this is all from this video where we have learned about the vertical curve, different types of vertical curve, the derivation of the vertical curve formula and at the end we come to know how we can calculate the high or low point in a vertical curve. So this is all from this video. Thank you for watching this video.